Assalamualaikum dan salam sejahtera kepada semua yang menentu webinar kita pada pagi ini sama ada melalui Webex ataupun menerusi FB Live. Terlebih dahulu, saya Nur Ain Abdul Rahman, Pegawai Sains selaku moderator mewakili Makmal Penyelidikan Universiti Industri UIRL Pusat Pengusaha Makmal Industri UTM Johor Bahru ingin mengucapkan selamat datang dan terima kasih kepada semua kerana dapat bersama meluangkan masa menentu webinar Bicara Pakar URL 2021. Untuk maklumat semua, webinar ini diadakan secara bersiri dengan melibatkan penceramah-penceramah yang telah dilantik dalam kalangan ahli akademik dan pendidik UTM sebagai pakar bidang di makmal berpusat URL. Untuk webinar siri pertama kali ini, ianya terbahagi kepada empat slot dan setiap slot dikhususkan kepada seorang pakar bidang yang telah dilantik mengikut makmal di URL. Perincian lanjut bagi empat slot berkenaan adalah seperti mana yang terdapat pada poster utama yang telah dihebahkan secara rasmi melalui email, website dan Facebook rasmi PPMU. Oleh yang demikian, seperti yang dijanjikan pada hari ini 23 Ogos 2021, slot kedua webinar bicara pakar URL 2021 bertajuk Nitrogen Sorption and Isotherm Analysis. Sebelum itu, saya ingin malu-alukan kehadiran penceramah yang juga merupakan pakar bidang makmal kimia analisis iaitu Profesor Madia Kemis, Dr. Zaitun binti Abdul Majid yang merupakan pesyarah Jabatan Kimia, Fakulti Sains di Jabatan Kimia UTM Johor Bahru. Jutaan terima kasih diucapkan kepada Profesor Madia Kemis, Dr. Zaitun kerana sudi meluangkan masa untuk berkongsi ilmu dan pengalaman kepada kami semua pada pagi ini. Pada semua penonton, webinar ini akan berlangsung selama satu jam dan selepas itu akan diadakan sesi soal jawab. Hadirin hadirat boleh menggumpulkan soalan di ruangan komen di Webex ataupun FB Live dan saya akan membacakan soalan tersebut kepada penceramah kita nanti. Untuk makluman, link kehadiran untuk mata CPD dan UTM Akad akan diletakkan di ruangan komen selepas 30 minit sesi perkongsian ini berlangsung. Sebelum saya menyerahkan petas maya ini kepada penceramah kita, saya ingin memperkenalkan secara ringkas latar belakang penceramah yang cukup berpengalaman yang ada bersama kita pada hari ini. Profesor Madia Kemis, Dr. Zaitun binti Abdul Majid merupakan seorang pesyarah di Jabatan Kimia Fakulti Sains UTM Johor Bahru dalam bidang kimia fizik. Beliau mula berkhidmat di UTM pada 1 Disember 1990 sebagai pesyarah. Beliau memperoleh ijazah kedoktoran dalam kejurutaraan awam dari Universiti Malaya. Pendidikan beliau merangkumi bidang physical chemist, absorption separation technology in wastewater treatment and cement chemist. Pendidikan beliau banyak tertumpu kepada penghasilan penyerap daripada sisa buangan pertanian dan industri. Profesor Madia Kemis Dr. Zaitun juga telah menerbitkan beberapa artikel berimpak tinggi dengan memiliki nilai H index semasa 21. Dengan tidak berbuang masa lagi, saya menjemput penceramah kita Profesor Madia Kemis Dr. Zaitun untuk memulakan sesi perkongsian beliau. Dengan segala hormatnya dipersilakan. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Terima kasih um, Ain sebagai pengusia majlis. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Salam sejahtera and a very good morning. Um, so um, I will start sharing my slides. Yeah? Okay. First and foremost, uh, thank you for attending this webinar. I do hope that um, all of us um, will benefit in one way or another in this webinar. I'm still in the learning process. I appreciate feedbacks and uh, contributions from the audience as well. So uh, this will be a more interactive um, webinar. Okay, uh, let me share my slide. Okay. So the topic today is on nitrogen. Um, on nitrogen absorption and isotherm analysis. Yeah, now um, I'm sure um, Maybe um, I did okay, yang survey tu. Do you have any feedback on the survey? Ayin? Maybe later on. Yeah. Uh, maybe later. Right, okay. So I'm sure some of you, uh, or maybe most of you, have an experience uh, at least um, um, uh, um, have heard of nitrogen absorption and isotherm analysis, 
or maybe yourself running the uh, natural absorption analysis in your research. Okay? So today we look at some basic understanding and a bit of examples. Okay. okay. Now, um, when we talk about uh, nitrogen absorption analysis, we are looking at the solid gas interface. Yeah. So maksudnya kita ada uh, solid propagel dan gas tu adalah gas nitrogen. Okay. And we're looking at gas absorption isotherm. Basically, we're looking at a fizzy absorption isotherm. Okay. So in this case, the nitrogen gas will be the absorbent gas and your solid will be the absorbent. Okay. So when we talk about nitrogen gas analysis, we're talking basically about the fizzy absorption analysis. Okay. Very specific. Okay. So at the end of the um, webinar today, we hope that uh, you can understand a bit on the concept of gas absorption, identify absorption isotherm from nitrogen analysis, and analyze um, some information related to absorption isotherms. Uh, normally, I give my students um, um, assignment. Eh? I will give them data related to the pressure related to natural absorption analysis and they, they submit. If you want, I can uh, put the assignment in the um, to to the organizer, and then if you want, you can try to do the assignment and submit to me. And you know, in my free time, I can just have a look at the assignment. Okay. Now, before we look at the process of um, absorption isotherm, now since we are talking about a gas solid um, process, okay, so let's take a look at the surface. We are talking basically about surface. So the gas, the absorbent gas in this case, your nitrogen, will be on a surface of solid. So just let's just let's just take a look at what a surface is. What is important of a surface in our analysis? Okay. Now, um, if you look here, I have pictures of some leaves here, yeah, and then lotus leaf some dried leaves and a picture of a cactus, yeah, cactus. So they have different morphology. Yeah, maksudnya, permukaan surface itu berbeza, okay? And this uh, actually um, uh, define the properties or uh, define the shape and form of the surface, okay? So we have um, the leaves, the cactus, okay? And the surface material, okay, will determine the chemical behaviors as to whether your sample is inert or reactive, as to whether your sample is hydrophobic, hydrophilic, or is it conducting or insulating, or it is um, porous or non-porous, okay? So when you prepare a sample, for example, solid surface absorbent, for example, you want to um, uh, understand yeah, the properties of your sample is very much related to the surface of your sample. Okay, this is, um, just to, uh, to make you a bit confused, what do you understand about surface and what is an interface, right? So basically, Interface, interface, it has the exact definition, okay? Uh, a surface, for example, if I have a surface of my phone, this is my surface, but then when I put uh, a box, you know, in between my phone, the in-between that becomes the interface. So we can get a surface or an interface, right? Okay. So the surface is basically uh, a region between a condensed phase liquid or solid and a gas vacuum, and the interface will be this region. So this is a bit on the, on the little details, right? So um, this is basically uh, what we talk about when we talk about surface and interface. So when you have a gas absorption, you're talking about the interaction of the gas on the surface or your interface. Okay. okay. So why are these uh, interfaces important? So when you talk about a solid vapor or solid gas, in this case, we're talking about your solid nitrogen interface. The application in absorption, catalysis, contamination, gas chromatography, and the rest of the interface, solid, liquid, liquid, vapor, liquid, liquid, these are all other interfaces, right? Okay. And of course, we have reaction and interfaces. If we're talking about absorption analysis involving reactive gases, then you would have reactions at the uh, surfaces or interfaces. Now, I'm sure most of you would like to um, know how you can actually um, determine the space area. Okay. Now, of course, when you run a, um, an isotherm, uh, a nitrogen analysis, a nitrogen absorption analysis, you want to look at the um, um, surface area, you want to look at the pore size distribution, you want to know the pore shape, okay? Um, particle size, particle morphology, you, you cannot get it from the uh, nitrogen absorption. You have to go to other, other, other means of analysis, right? So in this case, all these, properties are related, uh, all the all these um, um, parameters will affect your space area. So if you're talking about um, determining the space area of your sample, then you should have um, an understanding of how this affects your surface area. Okay. 
the full space area can be determined from many different uh, methods, but in, in this case, we are zooming on just only gas absorption. And, and in this particular case, we are looking at nitrogen absorption. Okay, so these are some of the properties which we can understand from the absorption at the solid gas interface, surface area, pore volume, a pore volume, and the uh, we can also look at the pore size here and the type of pore, whether it's a cylindrical shape pore, uh, slit shape pore, or ink bottle shape pore, uh, or open pores, we can also determine from the uh, types of the isotherm. Okay, okay, the pore size distribution, pore geometry, and connectivity. Okay, all right. So now absorption at the liquid interface. This that's the signal at what happens when you have a gas, in this case nitrogen, and you have your sample. So this is your sample. Yeah, this is your solid sample. And you're exposing your sample to the exorbic gas. So the gas will be absorbed first on a single layer. And we also have gases, um, gas molecules on the in the bulk phase. Yeah. So they will attach to your surface sample and that becomes the adsorbed layer. And this will determine actually the surface layer, the first monolayer will determine what we use to calculate the surface area of sample. Subsequently, the multi-layer does not affect the, uh, the, the calculation of your surface area. Okay, so in absorption process, basically you have a spontaneous accumulation of the gas or the adsorbic gas, which takes place on the adsorbent. Okay. And the reverse process, if you have experience with isotherm, you have absorption, the reverse process will be called the desorption, whereby the gas will be dissolved from your absorb, uh, absorb, uh, from your absorbent. So this is basically some terms. Yeah? You might want to look at some terms, what you mean by adsorption, adsorbent, adsorbate, uh, the adsorptive or the absorption. But most often you use the term absorption to imply that both adsorption and absorption can take place simultaneously. So this is just a, a bit of a background on the process of absorption. Yeah? So we have adsorbent, adsorbate, adsorption, absorption. You know, they have these are two terms. What is the adsorbent? What is the adsorbate? What is adsorption? What is absorption? And the main thing is that we just term it as adsorption process. Okay? And the forces which takes place can be physical and chemical process. So in this particular case, this morning we are looking at the physical absorption. Yeah, more to physical absorption, not chemical absorption. You're using nitrogen gas, so you're looking at the physical absorption process. Okay, so a bit a, a case eh, on differences between physical absorption and chemical absorption. Physical absorption normally involves weak, uh, long range forces like vacuum forces. The energetics is uh, not more than 50 kilojoules, and it can involve multi year absorption. Uh, and there is no surface reaction, but in the chemical absorption, it involves strong um, uh, forces. The energetics can be between up to 500 kJ per mole, and you have a monolayer absorption which takes place, and surface reaction can take place in a physical absorption reaction. Okay. So when you look at inert gas absorption, in this case, nitrogen is an inert gas. Yeah? So you're looking at inert gas absorption, in this case, nitrogen. So what can be measured? You can measure the surface area, you can measure the pore size distribution, you can also measure the heat absorption. Yeah? These are some data that you can get. Who will be interested in this result? Anyone who needs to understand how pore structure affects material performance. So let's say, for example, you, you have uh, prepared a material in the absorbent or um, a solid sample. You want to know how this material can perform. So you need to characterize your material first. So this is one method of characterizing your material. Of course, you can look at the morphology of your sample, and in which case you can look at the um, phi sem analysis. You can also look at transmission electron analysis. But if you want to look at the surface area, pore size distribution, pore types, um, uh, heats of absorption, yeah, and what are the uh, pore sizes, then you can go into the gas absorption analysis to analyze your sample. Okay. Um, you can also, as I mentioned just now, yeah, uh, you, you can also ask, you can also look at surface area analysis. Why you want to know about surface area? Because surface area will affect your dissolution rate. It will affect how fast, how slow your absorption process can take place. It will also affect the absorption capacity. And it can also affect any reaction which takes place on the surface. Right? So a bit more detail there. And in any gas absorption process, your result is an absorption isotherm. So once you run the absorption analysis, what you're going to get is, is you're going to get an isotherm. 
Isotherm, iso means constant, terms mean related to heat. So in this case, the, um, the analysis, the absorption analysis is carried out at the constant temperature of the liquid nitrogen temperature of 77 Kelvin. That is why we call it an isotherm, because the process is carried out at a constant temperature of 77 Kelvin for liquid nitrogen. So even though you're using um, a nitrogen gas at absorption, actually you are actually absorbing the liquid nitrogen in that phase. Because in any absorption process, you have the equilibrium between the liquid and the gas. So at 77 Kelvin, that is the liquid, uh, liquid uh, liquidation temperature of nitrogen. So you have actually um, absorption of your liquid nitrogen in the pores of your sample. So you have an isotherm. Yeah, the, the, the result is uh, obtained under a constant temperature of 77 Kelvin. So in this case, you have the absorption in the blue um, arrow and the desorption in the purple arrow. So this is the relative pressure. You increase the pressure from pressure about maybe 0.1 or 0 0.005, uh, 0.01, all the way up to one atmosphere or 0 0.99 relative pressure, P over P0. And this will be the amount absorbed in terms of the volume absorbed. Okay? So this is basically uh, what um, you do in the gas absorption. So basically, we have a bit on the foundation about surfaces. Why we, we look at surfaces? Because we are talking about the interaction of a gas onto a surface and how surface properties affect the gas absorption. And finally, the data that you get to get from this option will also indicate the properties of your surface. Okay? Right. So let's take a look at how this option process takes place in stages. So over here, we're looking at increase in pressure. Okay, I'm increasing the pressure okay, from a low pressure to a high pressure. So in stage one here, this okay, these are the pores, um, um, a, a diagram of pores. Yeah? So you have all these are pores, yeah. These are the pores. You have uh, micro pores, meso pores, yeah, and um, uh, macro pores, and so on. So as you increase the pressure, yeah, in stage one, these sites are being filled, yeah, by the adsorbic gas at low pressure. So at low pressure, you have, uh, you know, all these um, pores are being filled. As the pressure increases, you have more coverage of your molecules or the natural molecules, okay. And this, for example, if you have a monolayer coverage, this is a monolayer coverage. From here, you can determine the bed surface area. Now, anytime when you talk about surface area determination, you're talking about only, only a monolayer coverage. Because that, in the monolayer coverage, your absorbent, uh, absorbent gas is interacting with the surface of the material. But as you increase further, when you have your, have your multi layer coverage, that doesn't cover the surface area. So the surface area is determined from the first monolayer coverage of your gas. And as you increase the uh, gas uh, pressure, you have pore filling. Yeah, for the increase, you have pore filling. And you're going to have multi-layer. So this, you have this green, uh, um, greenish blue color and then the yellow color. That starts the multi-layer until there is a completely filled, a completely filled um, pores. Yeah? So still for the increase, the gas pressure will cause it to completely fill. And this is where you start your BGH calculation. Yeah, The BGH calculation will give you the order for distribution. Uh, so this is how it happens. So uh, um, basically, once you go to the UIRL or PPMU, you send your sample and um, the, um, the um, research officer okay, will run your sample. So she will start the pore, uh, she will increase the pressure and this is how it looks in the sample schematically. Okay, you start the pore filling. Okay, the amount of substance absorbed here. Yeah? Now, all this absorption process occurs at equilibrium, at equilibrium between the gas and liquid of uh, liquid nitrogen. And this all takes place at a temperature of 77 Kelvin. So that is why we say that the result is interpreted as an isotherm, a constant temperature data. That, temperature, that constant temperature is at the liquid nitrogen temperature of 77 Kelvin. So the amount of gas absorbed depends on temperature. In this case, you have the uh, liquid nitrogen temperature, the gas vapor pressure, the amount of gas that you, uh, the pressure increases of the gas, and the specific space area of your solid. And the nature of solid or gas plays a significant role. The nature of the absorbent has a profound effect on the absorption process. And this we have seen earlier. Why surface characteristics plays a very important role in any um, in any um, cases involving space reaction, be be it gas absorption or chemical reaction, you know anything. So we have seen earlier. Uh, I've elaborated. Okay. So this is again uh, what happens here yeah, when you put your solid sample. You have your gas. 
so it is taken up yeah, uh, by the, the sample and all these are affected by the gas pressure, temperatures, phase area, porosity, and the nature of your sample. So we just run through this very quickly. And now, um, once you have done that, you are going to get your result in terms of the isotherm. Okay. Now, <clears throat> again, yeah, remember this is a physics option um, and, uh, um, analysis. You're looking at natural absorption, which constitute on physical absorption, not chemical absorption. So as such, you have physics option isotherm classification. So all these six are physics option isotherm relating to physical absorption um, uh, processes. Okay. Mm, let me just. And recently, okay, recently we have uh, a more detailed, not recent, like 19, uh, no, 2000 something. Yeah? We have a more detailed. Most of you might have, might be familiar with the six types of isotherm, but recently, not recent, a few years back, they further refined type 1 isotherm into type 1A and type 1B. And then they still have the type 2 and type 3 isotherm. Type 4, they refined into type 4A and type 4B. And then type 5 and type 6. So uh, the difference between the older and the new classification is that the new the new classification further breaks down type one into type one A and B and type four into type four A and four B and four B. Okay. So, <clears throat> but the description is similar, right? Okay. Now, this is type one isotherm. Once you see this type one isotherm, you notice that okay, we have uh, okay. This is a monoabsorb for the y axis. Well, the x-axis gives you the relative pressure. Now, the pressure will increase from a low pressure up to a maximum of one atmospheric pressure or P over P0 of 0 0.99. P over P0, okay? Uh, P is the pressure. P0 is, um, <coughs> is the standard pressure of about one bar. <coughs> so now, <coughs> if you compare, for example, type 1 and let's say type 3 isotherm, in type 1 isotherm, at a very low pressure, you have an increase in the amount of volume absorbed, indicating that the absorption takes place very fast in the pores. Remember, this gas gas goes into the pores. How fast or how slow the uptake of the gas depends on your pore size. So um, if your pore size <coughs> is very small, if you're talking micro pores, a very low pressure is sufficient to fill the pores completely. Right, so in this particular case, in this particular case, type one particular uh, in type one um, <clears throat> physics option isotherm. At a very low pressure, you see a very high uptake of your gas. That gives tells you the first thing that your pores are very very small, or in this case, we call it micro pores. And another um, characteristic is that the <clears throat> when you further increase the pressure, there is a plateau. There is no more intake of the gas. That means the pores are already saturated. Micro pore saturated, saturates very fast. So this is a type one, yeah, isotherm indicating absorption in micro pores, and these absorptions are limited to a few molecular layers or perhaps maybe monolayer coverage. Okay, and this actually type one is actually a true chemisorption because it, if you're talking about uh, micro pores, normally it only covers a first layer, uh, and this is indicative of also chemisorption. Uh, isotherm. Okay, um, um, you can find this in activated carbon on, and some some zeolites. So depending on the pore size. Okay, now in <coughs> in part two. Okay, uh, so you have sim something similar in this case. For example, in one A, there's a sharp increase. Where this is attributed to ultra fine micro pores. There's a very sharp increase. Um, <coughs> but in type uh, in one um, B, type one B, there is a gradual but still high high uptake of the nitrogen. <coughs> Um, um, absorbate, okay, right. Now, in type B, yeah, this point here, this point B here is very important. It indicates the monolayer, uh, the completion of the monolayer coverage. And if you want to do a bad, um, bad, um, specific area, bad analysis, eh? a, spec a bad specific analysis, you you only take data up to point B. You cannot take data up to point B. So, point B is normally about 0. Point um, 3, 0 0.35. If you take more than point B, then you wouldn't have that. Um, you will have you wouldn't have that straight line. Yeah, uh, it will be skewed. Yeah, it will uh, no longer be in, in the range. Yeah? So this is um, after this point, then you have a multi layer coverage. So this particular <coughs> isotherm indicates um, either a non porous or non porous absorber, 
and it is a, an, an unrestricted uh, monolayer multilayer absorption. So you have both monolayer and multilayer absorption. Okay. Now, if you compare, for example, type one and type three, the difference here is that when you increase the pressure okay, in type three, there's only a gradual, uh, a gradual increase in um, the amount absorbed. As compared to type one, very sharp increase. So this here indicates that there is a weak Absorb, um, absorbent absorptive interaction um, and probably yeah probably related to um, macropause or maybe large mesopause but then of course mesopause we have the history system maybe large or uh, small macropause but this indicates a very weak interaction now weak interaction normally relates to very large pause macropause or very large mesopause now in type 4 you have at least a monolayer coverage similar to type 2 but then you have this history system yeah this history system is is a um, characteristic of, of a type 4 um, isotherm indicating the presence of mesopause yeah and then you have type uh, 5 you have mesopause but the interaction is very weak similar to a type 3 and type 6 is a stepwise um, multilayer. I, I have never had experience with type 6 isopause, honestly, because uh, these are more to uh, non-porous or non-uniform surface. Okay. Right. Okay, now pore size distribution. Okay, just now we look at hysteresis loop. So now this hysteresis loop can give us an uh, indication of what types of pore distribution. Uh, it is an um, indicator of mesopause. And this pore distribution depends on the sizes here. You have 0 to 2 nanometers are called the micropause, the mesopause range between 2 to 50, the macropause range between more than 50 nanometers. Now, uh, in this micropore, there is a further, uh, further classification. Anything below 1 nanometer is called ultra, ultra fine um, um, micropause. Anything below, yeah, uh, on, on this side, uh, um, uh, on this pore size, okay? All right, so again, we take a look at what happens now. Um, it is good to actually know what happens when, uh, uh, when you send your sample to UIRL and the science officer of the sample, okay? So uh, I'm trying to re relate this to the isotherm. This is an isotherm. This is a type 4 isotherm, okay? So this is A, you have this uh, filling, a pore filling. This is point B, whereby uh, you have a further pore filling. Uh, this is F, whereby you have uh, B is where you have the complete monolayer, F and then C, D complete pore filling, E and F be your desorption. Uh, so this is what happens uh, in your sample. This is for a cylindrical um, uh, sample. Okay? All right. Okay. Now, uh, be before we we continue, I have some questions uh, to ask you, so you can answer in the chat. Yeah. Um, let me, should I stop sharing first? Eh? Should I stop sharing you? Uh, let me just stop sharing so we can answer some question. Okay. Okay, you can answer in the chat, yeah, um, in the, um, um, for my question. Now, um, my first question is that, um, how many physics option isotherms are there when you run a nitrogen analysis? Okay. The first person who answers correctly will get uh, something from uh, UIRL. Okay. How many uh, um, option isotherms are there when you run a nitrogen uh, isotherm analysis? Okay, uh, right, Encik Muhammad Nizam, six. Uh, so the, the correct answer is six, uh, six types of isotherm, uh, Encik Muhammad Nizam. Okay. Now the second question, okay. Um, what does the type 1 isotherm indicate to you regarding the sample? What does the type 1 isotherm indicate to you regarding the... Oh, I have the uh, answer. Muhammad Nizam again. Boleh kedua kali menang? Muhammad Nizam jawab micropore betul. Muhammad, uh, mungkin Muhammad Nizam dah menang yang atas tadi. Kita kasi yang second-second lah ya, Muhammad Nizam. Nur Aina lah. Uh, Nur Aina. Okay. Jadi, um, the, the type 1 isotherm indicates the presence of micropause. Okay. okay, jadi ada 26 ya. So, Nizam dapat satu hadiah aja dulu. Jadi, second one kita bagi pada uh, uh, Nur Aina. Alright, okay. Thank you so much. Okay. Alright, now we, we continue. Okay. 
kita uh, give you more examples ya. These are again examples of um, feeling ya. Uh, it is important to understand this because sometimes uh, when I teach in class, uh, we cannot visualize. When you send your samples to your IRL, um, we did not really. Um, uh, Uh, Hilmi kata soalan bocor Nizam lah. Cepat betul lah Nizam ni soalan bocor ni tu. Uh, Nizam dah terror sebenarnya. <laughs> Alright, okay. Mm. So, um, so you know, this is what happens. Yeah? So, it's good to be able to visualize and this is what you get. Yeah? This is the absorption, uh, absorption isotherm and then uh, then you have the desorption yeah? isotherm. So, we want to take both. Yeah? Uh, when you run any sample, you want to take both, especially when you have a type 4 or if you think you have mesopause, then you want to have both to see whether there is the cirrhosis or not. In this case, kalau kita tengok kat sini kan, that might be also present micropause. Sebab apa? Dekat sini, the very low pressure, the uptake dia dah tinggi, then dia cepat, ya, yeah? uh, cepat level off. So, there might be micropause. How do you know? We have to look at the precise distribution. Okay, okay. so this is just, uh, just to show you some something uh, which you might be familiar with when you run your sample with url they will give you the natural iso isotherm and then they run you the best the bad part now notice here yeah? kalau kita lihat dekat sini the isotherm runs from about 0. Point something to about 1 yeah versus 0. 0.99 okay but the bad plot yeah the bad plot gives you up to about 0. 0.3 yang paling best 0.3 lah dekat sini lah kita kata tadi uh, point b dia tu when all the monolayer coverage has been uh, full. So you only take your data for bad uh, surface analysis up to the monolayer coverage. And if you look at the C value, C value ni is uh, when you run the bad analysis, when the URLL bring you data to, look at the C value. The bad C value ni must be positive. If you have a negative C value, then something is wrong with your data. And of course, the correlation coefficient R squared, which is very good, is 0.99 yeah if you have that 0.96 point two, you could you can think about it maybe you have to reduce the the data upon your coverage maybe lower pressure in yeah, lower pressure okay All right uh, these are just examples yeah, of some of the iso analysis and again here uh kita tengok, this is the micropore region yeah example of a type monitor isotherm and this is the um process distribution by nldft now you can have different process distribution uh, most often uh, in the old instrument, I use um, BGH process distribution. But of course, in the newer, newer instrument, they have all sorts of ways to uh, analyze the process distribution. So in this case, uh, if I look at type 1 natural isotherm, of course, tadi kan Nizam jawab type 1 and then Aina jawab uh, micropause. But how do I prove that? I can always look at the process distribution. So in this case, uh, kalau tengok, ya, process distribution tadi, kalau less than 2 nanometer, micropause kan? So kita tengok. Possessive between 0 0.5 up to 1, not more than that. So, yes, your samples contain micropods. But then again, um, nitrogen isotherm, not all instruments uh, can go into the possessive. Nanti kita akan lihat, uh, most of the older instruments can only uh, read mesopause, but they can indicate to you there are micropods by certain indication in the uh, possessive distribution um, um, graph yeah, or analysis. Okay. Uh, so uh, this is again just um, uh, apa, um, and apa tu, just a recap ni. Apa kita tengok tadi type four and so on ni kita recap ni. Just tengok recap saja. And this are the process distribution that you you might. Kalau tiba-tiba awak tengok process distribution kan tiba-tiba ada macam ni kan. Uh, sebenarnya it corresponds to this part ni at the close of that uh, monolayer. <coughs> okay. Examples. Okay, I'm going to give you examples. Yeah. Uh, let me stop sharing this uh, so that you can have more. Oops. Okay, mm. I'm going to share. Um, okay, we have about 15 minutes here. Yeah? So, kids are not share. This is, I'm sharing direct from my lecture notes, the specific application so that we can have. Um, okay. Uh, is it clear? Uh, Ayn, is it clear? Right, okay. So, let's say, for example, I have an activated carbon norit, yeah? Um, okay, so this is the isotherm for norit. Yeah, uh, pressure P over P naught. Yeah, P naught is the um, um, our atmospheric pressure in bar. Yeah? P naught one bar. P ni apa apa pressure lah. So normally kita sampai about 0.99. So uh, this if your absorption and the punya dia yeah? desorption. Okay, 
Summary report, they said that the bad space area is 1190.141 square uh, meter squared. Okay. Now, if you look at this particular absorption isotherm, do you think the bad space area is um, logic tak dengan absorption isotherm ni? Uh, siapa nak jawab boleh jawab? Agak-agaknya logic tak? Um, I mana check tadi? Agak-agaknya logic tak dia, dia, dia punya apa? Dia punya jawapan tu dengan dengan apa dengan exhaustion isotherm ni kita tengok. Ain macam saya tak check je saya dah ter where dah put the check? Saya dah terlalu check ke? Ha ada tak orang jawab Ain sebab saya macam apa saya tak boleh buka check saya ni? Second oh, question haven haven on. Okey dia uh, sekejap saya tengok oh check saya kat sini okey. Okay now, for example then, uh, if you look at this isotherm of uh, norit ni, tapi tekan norit, and then you are told that <coughs> the surface area is more than 1000. You rasa logic tak isotherm ni dengan space area ni? Doctor, there's a question, there's an answer in the chat box. I can see it. Doctor, saya tak apa saya tak nampak ni. Okay, logic. Nur Hayati. Uh, okay, nak, eh, Hafiz nak pergi sejak awak eh. Nur Hayati, boleh on sekejap. Mengapa awak kata logik Nur Hayati? Boleh uh, unmute lah Hayati, boleh unmute. Mengapa? Uh, Assalamualaikum. Salam. Eh, saya nampak dia punya graf tu macam uh, absorption tu dia lebih bawah. And then desorption tu yang kat bahagian atas. Ah, yang itu betul memang. Betul. Hmm. We, yang ni, kita, we have absorption. Yang ni kita ada desorption. Tapi hmm. uh, based on this shape of the isotherm ni, Lepas tu dia bagi, dia punya s is more than 1,000. You rasa logic tak? Uh, ini kata you hantar ke URL kan? Dia dapat ni, sekali URL bagi you s ni. Lepas tu you rasa logic tak jawapan tu? Uh, jawapan apa? Uh, service area 1,000 lebih tu. Logic tak dengan isotherm uh, shape tu? Ah uh, Ini saya tak sure lagi ni. Ah uh, Okay, tak apa. Tapi tadi yang saya logic kan? Okay. Uh, kalau kita lihat ni, it is logical. Kalau if you look at the um, isotherm kan, kita ni pure berpinak kan? At very low pressure, dia punya uptake dah tinggi dah tau. Uptake volume dah tinggi. So kita expect maybe dia ada some micropause. Kita expect lah. Sebab apa dia tinggi kan. And of course based on the kita dia ada mesopause lah. Tapi sama ada mesopause ni is small mesopause or on the larger mesopause tu kita, kita kena tengok dia punya puasa distribution. But this is logical because kita tengok kita tengok kat sini dekat very low pressure uptake dia dah tinggi. So betul lah. Ha, jadi maksudnya bila you hantar sample ke PPM ke mana tu kita kadang kena soal. Uh, betul tak sebenarnya kan uh, so kat sini and then um, average pore diameter dia kata 21.26 so 21.26 angstrom ni is um, 2.1 nanometer ni uh, macam sedikit lebih pada micropause kan jadi micropause kita kata up to 2 nanometers uh, meso between 2 to 15 nanometers and then more than 50 is macro but uh, itu nanometer kalau angstrom ni eh? so kalau nanometer about 2 point something so meaning tapi dalam ni kita tengok eh ada hysteresis loop ada mesopause. Tapi yang size ni nampak macam lebih kepada meso. Kan? Tapi bila-bila kepada meso ni then betul lah. Aspect ni memang betul lah sebenarnya. Logic kan? So now nak confirm ni kita have to add the process distribution. So whenever you get your uh, results here from PPMU ke pada mana-mana ke try to aspect question. Betul ke tak betul ke uh, ataupun mungkin tanya you know mm, Ah, betul, um, uh, if you are not clear, ask the their science officer mengapa dan mengapa. Yeah? Jadi, then we understand better of our, 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 the data that we get, okay, for example, okay. So, ni, um, okay. Now, this one tadi saya tak touch the plot sebab saya tak nak be too detailed. Now, a T-plot ni actually uh, is is um, executed when you run the T-plot when you um, suspect that you have a micropause. Jadi kita boleh tentulah kan dia punya micropore area. Ya. So in this case, there's another sample, um, analysis yang kita run. Biasa kita akan dapat, kita boleh minta URL nak nak bet ke, nak t-plot. So kita boleh minta lah data so they can just send the sample. And then there of course equation and from this t-plot, dia dapat lah dia punya apa, uh, micropore volume as 228.417. Ya. And then um, this is the micropore space area. Uh, so in this particular case, memanglah sample tu um, ada dia punya micropause uh, because you can run the t-plot. Kalau kita tak ada micropause ni, kalau kita tengok macam ni kan, um, 
dia start rendah macam landai ha, tak ada tipot tak payah dah, tak, tak ada mikrofon tak payah dan tipot ha the waste of time but if your sample start tinggi tu then it's worth to run the tipot to get the uh, micropore volume okay okay now ha, sample tak ada micropore pula kan ha okay ha, thanks ya tia ya uh, saya nak jawab tadi siapa siapa so, soal tadi uh, uh, hafiz Berkenaan isu-isu itu boleh indicate my support. Does the size boleh indicate volume? Okay. Now ni, the 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 shape, the shape, the size to indicates um, uh, the type of um, pores. You can have cylindrical, you can have stick shape pores, you can have um, ink bottle shape pores. Ya. Yeah? Jadi dia, dia punya uh, dia ada. Nah, saya tak tak dia tak perlu tak. Dia ada kecil, slim, lebar. So that indicates the shape of the pore. Because kalau cylindrical shape yang sama kan dia akan terus macam ni lebih macam ni. Kalau katalah in bottle shape tu dia macam lebab sikit. Kalau sip shape tu dia macam lepih sikit. So the 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 the, the shape of the your tissue tu indicates what type of pores are present in your sample. Ya yeah, Fizah? Alright okay. Okay now ni uh, tengok with no micropore. So tengok beza dia kan. Bila kita run dia at low pressure dia landai macam ni relax sample je kan. Tapi kalau ni tadi ni at low pressure ni terus meloncat. Ha, ni dah indikatif dah. Confirm insyaAllah ada micropore. Lepas tu tengok plus fisik dia dia besar. Oh ni memang confirm lah. Ha, macam ni boleh run tiplot kan. Okay. Tapi kalau ni dia landai je kan. And then tengok fisik dia dia 21. Kecil kan. Ha, confirm tak ada micropore. Average pore diameter uh, 183.967 angstrom which is 18.3 uh, nanometer which falls in the range of mesopause. Jadi ini nak tahu apa? Nak tahu uh, dia memang macam ni dah tahu confirm mesopause type 4. Nak tahu dia ni syndical ke stick shape ke kita tengok lagi satu, satu apa satu guideline tu. Uh, apa dia most probably macam ni syndical lah ya. Tapi kita, kita tengok guideline. Sometimes dia mix. Bila kita run actual sample, I work a lot with actual sample. Saya tak synthesize. Saya work with a lot of waste sample. Jadi saya punya history system tu kadang-kadang bentuk uh, merapu-rapu sebab apa? Bukan merapu. Tak ada dalam jadual buku tu bentuk dia. Sebab apa saya work with actual sample dan saya kena tak tak boleh nak um, tak boleh nak um, apa tu shape my sample into uh, into um, apa tu um, uh, uniform uniform pore size tak, tak boleh. Uh, tapi if you synthesize your sample then it's possible to do so. Okay. Okay. No micro pores. Okay. So ni dia punya uh, apa ni dia punya pore size distribution ya. So tadi kita tengok kan. Okay. Tadi kita kata uh, ini confirm lah uh, type 4. Type 4 mesopause. Kita tengok pula uh, URL bagi data, oh confirm as a pause. Tapi kita kata, no I want to make sure. Betul tak as a pause? Then you go to this pause size distribution. Dia ada banyak pause size distribution method tapi yang ini sample lama saja kan. So dia adalah BGH, BGH desorption. Bila kita tengok pause size distribution, kita kena tengok desorption um, desorption branch. Tak boleh tengok desorption branch. Sebab apa? Masa desorption branch tu, dia bawa isi. Dia bawa isi sikit-sikit kan. Tapi bila desorption, kita punya pause tu dah penuh. Dia dah macam botol air ni kan. Dia, dia dah penuh. Lepas tu kita keluarkan. Boleh kita tahu bentuk dia macam mana. Tapi kalau kita take pause distribution daripada absorption branch. Dia boleh isi sikit-sikit. Dia, dia tak complete. So kita kena ambil from this option. Often many times when I evaluate thesis PhD ke masters. Bisa tanya kan. Uh, pause distribution ambil daripada mana. Kalau dia tak ada bagi uh, appendix kan. Uh, absorption doktor. Tak, tak betul lah. Absorption tak tepat. Bukan tak betul tak tepat. You kena ambil this option sebab. Bila dia desorption branch, dia punya pause tu dah, dah penuh kan. So, tu air dah, dah penuh. Lepas tu dia akan keluar lah. Barulah kita tahu actual sebenarnya apa pause distribution. So, kalau tengok dekat sini. Tadi kita kita agak mezzo pause kan. Kalau tengok sini betul. Ya, yeah, kita tengok dekat sini. Memang pause dia between 100 to 200 uh, angstrom. Okay, between 10 to 20 angstrom. Dia punya average dekat sini. Yang ni dalam pause dan angstrom. This is the log scale dia. So, kita ada... 100, 200, 300, 400 sampai situ. So ni memang dalam range mesopause. Kalau dia ada micropause contohnya tapi uh, uh, BGH ni tak boleh detect. Dia akan nampak dia akan satu line naik dekat uh, less than 2 nanometer ni. Then dia indicate juga micropause tapi kita tak tahu how much. Yeah, yeah, in, kalau kita guna natural absorption yang ni. Okay. okay this is also again uh, the uh, T plot yeah? and this is the alpha S method lah of using um, of using anu. Uh, so ni yang kata, saya kata this are some of the alpha S method yang saya tak nak cover sebab more to detail. So I'm not covering that one for the alpha S method. Eh? Okay. Okay this is again alpha S method. Alpha S method ni satu lagi keedah juga sama macam T-plot nak tentukan only micropause volume and uh, space area. We shall not cover. So this is example lah eh? ya. Kalau kita ada micropause, this is the alpha S method. 
or you can also use a T plot yeah, to get more data. Basically, kalau PhD student dia akan tengok benda ni, yeah, tengok ni. Okay. Uh, this is the BGH deduction. So, kalau kita tengok tadi, yeah, ni sample ni, this is uh, sample TS 40, 450 ni, dia memang um, uh, micropause, yeah, dia ada micropause. So, kalau kita tengok dia punya pore size, uh, dekat sini, dekat um, 20 and strong ni, dia naik ke atas. Naik ke atas tu maksudnya ada micropause tapi this particular software tak boleh detect. You kena guna software lain. Uh, so ini sebab software lama kan. Jadi kalau itu dia kena tu. So that's why student dia akan run T plot ataupun alpha S plot nak tentukan more details on the pore size. Kita kena buat uh, separate D lah. Kita tak boleh dapat. Uh, ni. Yeah. So this are also similar on uh, ni. So we have the absorption isotherm and this is the BGH. So tengok kat sini ya. So kalau kita lihat kat sini ya. Sini Uh, 198, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2 uh, 20 nanometer 20 and so which is 2 nanometer so dekat sini the the sample, the data cannot detect anymore so this part here bila you ada something like naik tinggi atas if you use a BGH deduction it indicates that they are micropause and it is true from a sample isotherm yang you ada micropause so then you have to run a T-plot or alpha S to get more information on the, micro, on the micropause But if you run uh, apa tu DFT punya software pun dia dah boleh automatically dia boleh dapat lah dia punya micro pause punya uh, details dekat situ. Okay. Right. And then uh, these are also other samples. This of course uh, ada meso pause. Ha, ni shape dia berbeza ya. Meso pause dan kalau kita tengok dia punya pause distribution. Ya. Yeah? Uh, this is the pause distribution. Dia ada 20 daripada 20 ke dalam 1000. So di sini dia ada meso pause dan juga dia ada macro pause. Dia ada macro pause juga di sini. So that is why kita tengok landai je. Ha, kalau landai macam ni memang guarantee ada macro pause. Ataupun big meso pause. Nak tahu you have to look at the pause size distribution. Baru you tahu. Jadi bila you explain dia tadi you punya thesis ke data tu. Actually from here you you kalau uh, URL bagi data yang uh, pleasure dengan volume tu. You boleh pecah-pecahkan calculate percentage. You boleh buat Instagram buat percentage. Dia boleh kata percentage macro pause berapa. Percentage meso pause berapa. Um, apa tu um, from there you can better understand your sample uh, jadi dekat situ if your sample ada banyak micro pores surface area you tinggi uh, then sufficient kan tapi kalau surface area kecil then you think oh sebenarnya I have large meso sometimes your surface area tinggi juga you tak ada micro pores tapi you have small meso uh, jadi uh, micro apa pores distribution sangat penting to better understand your sample yang ini dia bagi you Okay, type apa, apa dia. Tapi nak better understand, you better look at this one. This is very important. Banyak yang orang overlook ni sample. Dan bila dia buat pengenangan, dia buat absorption. Ya, yeah, jadi kita kena buat absorption data dia. Okay. Okay. And this are some of the index ni. Kita tak, tak tengok lah index ni. Tak tengok, right? Okay, so um, jadi I've already finished. Uh, uh, saya 6 minit cepat ya. Yeah. I have to finish at 11 but I'm open to question and answers. Kalau ada apa-apa soalan, mungkin saya tengok dekat chat. Yes, there's a question, doctor. Okay, okay, saya, jap, jap, saya. From Dr. Nur Hayati and Muhammad Nizam. Uh, jap, mana chat tadi? Jap, jap, tengok. Alright, uh, pro sample saya dapat type 1 micropore tapi dalam GH ada value. Perlu ke? Uh, maksudnya value apa tu Nizam? Uh, value apa? Maksud Nizam value macam mana? Uh, BGH value tu uh, maksudnya Um, bila BGH ni, okay, nilai macam mana? Dia, dia kita ada BGH desorption, BGH absorption, dia akan tengok pore size distribution. Ni BGH pore size ke maksudnya? Nizam? Uh, no, Yati, yes you can have the slide. Nanti saya bagi URL, you boleh ambil slide tu. Nizam kata uh, uh, pore size. Pore size ni Nizam, BGH pore. You talking about pore size? Dia bagi average lah tu. Uh, okay, contohnya apa, apa average proses yang dia bagi kat dia punya uh, micropore tu? Biasa kalau kita buat yang BGH tu, kalau micropore, kalau alat yang lama dia akan naik ke atas, dia nampak tu tapi kita kena run alpha S ataupun T plot. Uh, tapi kalau katalah alat yang the later one, kalau you run DFT ke, you boleh dapat proses tu. Tapi kalau you kata report BGH value ni, Pore size ni Zah. You talking about pore size? Hello, Assalamualaikum Prof. Ah, okay. Salam. Okay. Be better bercakap kot kalau tak. Okay. Macam mana ni Zah? Okay. Sebab so saya dia run dapatkan satu micro pole lah. Tech one, tech one untuk sample saya. 
Okey, alright. Tu uh, daripada staff tu dia, dia run sekali untuk BJH. Lepas tu yang uh, saya faham BJH tu. Ah, ha, apa tu yang saya yang faham lah yang BJH ni memang untuk mesopo, untuk determine mesopo kan tu. Oh dia, dia macam ni. Okey macam tadi saya tunjukkan dia sebenarnya memang BJH ni kita akan tengok uh, post resolution untuk mesopo, micropore tetapi kalau sampel you ada micropore dia akan naik ke atas yang pas 20 angstrom atau 2 nanometer tu dia akan nampak lain naik ke atas. Dan dia menunjukkan you ada micropore dan you kena guna teknik alpha S ataupun T plot uh, kat situ. Tapi kalau lah dia boleh ada juga um, alat yang boleh terus dari di uh, calculate micropos. Uh, ni software dia bukan software dia. Tapi kalau BGH tu dia akan tunjukkan meso, macro. Tapi bila micro dia akan naikkan tadi dia tak akan nampak value. Tapi mungkin kalau dia report value tu mungkin dia based on average dia akan report kat situ. Tapi still saya prefer guna alpha S ataupun T plot ataupun uh, mungkin you boleh tengok uh, yang dia bagi tu average, average uh, pore diameter kat situ. Uh, tapi kalau nak you run alpha S ataupun uh, T plot untuk tengok lebih on the pore volume, uh, betul dia micro pore volume. Uh, kalau you run T plot tu ada, dia ada dalam micro volume mungkin sikit. Tapi kena tengok BGH tu dia kena naik ke atas sikit dekat 20 angstrom atau putih dalam tu dia naik ke atas. That mean dia tak boleh detect dah macam tu. Dia uh, what's the value yang, yang, yang ni dah dapat yang tu? Dia, dia bagi dalam average pore volume macam tu. Uh, berapa nilai dia average pore volume? Uh, 0.00 something kecil lah macam Ah uh, tak boleh nak itu yang uh, uh, is um I, uh, itu saya saya nak kena tengok software dia apa sebab saya kena tahu dia kalau kalau kosong kosong something tu macam macam pelik pula saya rasa saya kena tengok software dia. Ya. Yeah? Biasa memang kita ada uh, angstrom and nanometer. Yours is in angstrom? Nanometer? Uh, dalam angstrom ah. Angstrom. So convert 0.0 something uh, nanometer uh, uh, tukar decimal place dia ke belakang sikit. Berapa tadi 0.0 apa? 0. Lebih kurang dalam 0.0063 macam tu. Oh eh kecil ni. That mean you ada uh, 0.06 nanometer. Kalau BGH biasa tak boleh detect. Mungkin uh, kalau tadi ada satu sampel tengok yang guna DFT tu you boleh detect macam kecil. Tapi maybe this one kena, kena check ni Zam. Saya, saya rasa macam something not right kan. Sebab kalau tu dia kalau you guna DFT boleh. Kalau BGH tak tak boleh. Unless dia average out gitu kan. Kita tengok dia punya software. Uh, saya, saya rasa uh, itu tak berapa tepat. Ha. Tapi saya kena tengok data okay. tu. If you want you can show me the data. Uh, you can have my email kan. Nanti boleh boleh contact me. You can show me the data. I boleh advise you. Okay. Hmm. Okay Hafiz kata about BGH power volume. Can Paul explain about BGH curve? Oh yang tadi. Okay saya tunjukkan. Um, uh, tidak ya Ahmad tadi. Saya share uh, Hafiz ni. Okay. Hmm. Ini adalah BGH, uh, contoh ya, uh, Hafiz boleh nampak ya, BGH desorption, DB delog uh, versus pore volume ni, dia punya amount absorb, uh, pore volume ni, ni versus dia punya pore diameter. Uh, Dalam bahasa Melayu lagi ni, uh, slide memang slide lama dulu dia. Jadi yang ini ni, dia akan tengok how much of the uh, pores, yeah, um, what are the pore size and the um, um, corresponding amount of uh, natural gas which is absorbed by those pores. Yeah. Jadi kalau dekat sini kita tengok kan, dia ni dalam uh, log scale lah. Log scale ni daripada ni 100, 200, 300, 400, 500 sampai dah 1000 ya. So ni adalah 9, 8, 7, ni ada 2, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 91. Okay. Jadi dekat sini and strong ya, 20 and strong atau nanometer. So kalau kita lihat kat sini, bila dekat kalau tu nanometer below adalah micropause. Jadi line ni dia tak boleh go tau beyond tu nanometer below. So ini menunjukkan kita ada micropause yang sampai kita. Okay. So this BGH, desorption, DB, hanya boleh tengok data meso dengan makro saja. Makro pun sampai, um, um, because kalau more than 500 uh, angstrom tu dah makro kan, dia akan dapat about 1000 uh, angstrom. So dia akan dapat So from here, Hafiz boleh tengok berapa persen dia punya meso, berapa persen makro dia boleh tengok. Tapi micro tak boleh tengok. But you know there is sebab dia dia naik ke atas ni. So you have to run alpha S ataupun T plot to get the micro pore volume. Okay. Uh, memang the system can run. So kalau kita tengok dia punya corresponding isotherm dia macam ni. Memang isotherm dia nampak memang dia ada micro. Tapi dia ada sikit ni kan. Sisi slope ni. That mean dia ada meso. Nak tahu uh, meso tu meso kecil ke besar tengok. Uh, dia ada meso kecil. Meso kecil dia about 
dalam between 30 to uh, the, the average lah about 30 uh, 34, 40, to about 30 to 60 uh, angstrom or 3 to 6 nanometer. Meso kecil tu bukan meso runs from 2 to 15 nanometer or 20 to 500 angstrom. Uh, so that's kita nampak ya. Dia memang ada banyaknya micro tapi dia ada juga meso. Uh, tapi the shape ni kalau kita kita kena besarkan dia punya isotern nak tahu shape dia apa. Syndical ke apa ke kita kena tengok besarkan shape tu. Uh, that's why ni dia run alpha S nak tengok apa dia punya apa tu uh, power volume dia kat situ. Okay. Hmm. So uh, memang saya sangat tekankan uh, ni sangat penting. Uh, yang ini betul first impression dah tahu apa. Tapi yang ini nak tahu detail lagi. Uh, to detail. And then from there you boleh from there you boleh agak betul tak bad macam mana yang soal kan. Uh, you boleh actually roughly um, understand your sample better. Is that okay Hafiz? Do, do I explain your, your, your queries? Kalau macam tak berapa uh, clear nanti you boleh dia tanya saya nanti uh, hantar email uh, tanya dia tak, tak ada masalah. Okay and LDFT ni okay uh, you can use for uh, micropause because dia basically uh, dia boleh run dua-dua tapi uh, you can also get uh, micropause uh, value from here. This is a software. Uh, dia nantikan bila you pergi UPMU tu ataupun mana-mana sample tu you boleh minta macam di mak-mak saya tu kita boleh run semua tapi kadang-kadang um, undergraduate kan kita suruh yang basic adalah so that they understand basic principle. Tapi kalau PhD dia run semua. Tapi sometimes bila PhD student ke master student dia run semua lepas tu dia letak semua data. Lepas tu kadang-kadang bila saya tengok PhD saya eh apa sahaja ada negative warning tu. Letak dalam ni negative. Oh dia dapat from me. Dia tak boleh. So bila you nak run sesuatu tu you understand what the particular software can give information. Ha, kan? Jadi you nak contohnya kalau BDH tak boleh tak dapat micropause you run lah um, NLDFT ke so you dapat micropause and you get some data on that. Ha, tapi biasanya kalau you talk about micropause ni kalau strictly micropause ni you're talking more about chemist option. Tapi of course when we prepare sample we have a mixture micropause and mesopause. Dia macam kita tengok activated carbon norit tadi kan. Dia ada micro dia ada meso. Tapi spesifikasi tinggi sebab dia ada banyak micro and maybe small meso dekat situ. Okay, mengapa uh, biji saya versus power width? Boleh juga you nak versus power width boleh, power volume, uh, power volume uh, apa, power diameter pun boleh. Uh, anyone is okay. Uh, sebab kalau saya buat power diameter, saya tahu lah diameter saya punya apa tu, uh, uh, power, power diameter saya. Uh, so you can, tapi saya prefer guna yang power diameter sebab saya akan tu tahu what is the power diameter. Because power diameter tu, bila, bila kita buat IUPAC classification kan of um, power size tu, kalau 2 to 5, uh, less, uh, uh, less than 2 nanometer, uh, pore width adalah um, micro, between uh, micro pores. 2 to 50 adalah mesopore. Jadi dia, dia define in terms of pore, um, pore diameter. That is why saya suka guna diameter dalam saya punya BDH. Saya akan choose diameter sebab saya nak linkkan dengan IUPAC classification which uses pore diameter as pore classification. Uh, uh, DFT boleh buat kat Ain uh, because saya, saya uh, ke, because yang UPMU guna bukan micromeratics Ain kan, dia guna lain. DFT boleh buat ke? Kalau micromeratics boleh buat DFT. Kalau you all punya tu boleh buat DFT kat Ain? I, I refer to the PIC. Ya yeah, uh, sebab kalau micromeratics boleh buat DFT tapi yang uh, saya tak pasti guna uh, UPMU tu hari tu uh, sama dia, dia boleh buat. Depends on software apa yang kita beli lah. Uh. Okay, uh, Yana kata tak boleh buat DFT. Uh, tak boleh. Tapi macam di jabatan kimia kita di DFT cuma alat terosak. Kita ni kita ni micrometik saya kuat high end tapi dah, dah rosak. Okay. Dan kita masih dalam proses untuk anu apa? Yang untuk anu. Untuk pore description axis sesuai digunalah. Pore ni uh, dia uh, volume um, yang ni uh, volume uh, volume absorb versus pore diameter. So you know how much is being absorbed versus your pore diameter. So the pore diameter will be on the x-axis, the volume will be on the y-axis. Any question? Okay. So the yeah, yeah. Can see the uh, survey. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Survey. Yeah. Ah, so, oh, my, so in your WhatsApp. In my WhatsApp, yeah. Okay. So, yeah. Okay. Uh, sekejap. Hmm. Ain punya. Open Ain sekejap. Isi tengok ni. Okay. Survey ni. 
Oh, oh tak. Dia, dia punya, saya tak dapat dia punya data. Ah, dia, I, dia, dia, I can share dia. Uh, I can share, share the, uh, the survey. Okay. So, doctor so, have to. Yep. Uh. Alright, I stop sharing. Okay. How about DV? Four weeks. Four weeks versus. Uh, power with dan nanometer. Uh, uh, ni sesuai. Okay, Hafiz ni boleh. You punya power volume versus power with nanometer. Boleh? Yeah, you can uh, you can discuss the power volume. That means you can ambil area under the curve. Tapi biasanya bila data bagi, dia dah bagi dah the average power volume. Dia dah bagi power volume. Tapi kalau katalah you nak buat one by one tu, uh, you actually boleh ambil actual data Hafiz yang dia ada pressure volume tu. From there you calculate. Masa dulu-dulu saya calculate one by one tau. Saya buat sebab saya prefer macam tu sebab sebab dia saya calculate per volume tu daripada data pressure volume yang dia orang bagi tu one by one. Okay. Kalau macam uh, uh, saya 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 punya email kan so kalau macam you all uh, kalau ada apa-apa soalan uh, boleh lah tanya email nanti. Yeah. Okay yang ini um, okay 54% interested just to fill my past time to enhance knowledge. So ramai yang student dan juga technical staff ya. Ya juga academic staff. Uh, next and ID ada lagi. Okay. Have you used nitrogen or uh, I naik sikit tak nampak. Uh, tak masuk ke bawah sorry. So ramai yang belum pernah guna ya. Okay. So uh, since ramai yang belum pernah guna dan yang pernah guna. So hopefully ramai yang belum pernah guna tu adalah sikit kefahaman bila nak guna nanti untuk punya research. Yeah. Yang dah guna tu saya harap it helps a lot Then you can always contact me uh, You know through my email Kalau ada apa-apa soalan ke apa-apa nak Apa-apa kan? apa -apa nak, nak nak tanya ya? Okay. The question is from Hafiz Ruhaimi uh, How about dah, DB Dah jawab dah, 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 tadi dah uh, Hafiz this is why uh, Untuk discuss per volume uh, Itulah saya kata tadi Hafiz Kalau kalau eloknya uh, you can take area under the curve kalau saya, saya suka ambil raw data dan saya kakit separately. Range daripada mana ke mana tu saya kakit separately dan saya tengok dia punya percentage of um, apa tu pore volume dia. Saya tengok situ one by one. Kalau kata nak isoporm ni um, percentage berapa, makropore berapa. Saya akan kakit pada raw data tu saya satu. Sebab saya nak tengok percentage dia. Hmm. Um, dia biasa, okay. Kita akan ambil specifically from bad, bad analysis because Bad analysis ni um, uh, whatever which is reported ya, dia akan um, kalau kita tengok tadi lecture awal tu uh, saya share lecture awal tadi ya, saya share so that we can have a clearer understanding hmm. Okay let me share this one Okay kita tengok Okay kalau kita tengok dekat sini ya Uh, dekat ni uh, Stage 1, stage 2 ni Bila stage 2 ni Eh, jangan saya buat slide share, sorry Bila stage 2 ni Dia completely fill the monorail That means kalau katalah uh, ini surface saya kan um, Dia tutup semua The first monorail coverage So that, bila tutup macam tu There is interaction between your um, uh, Exorbic gas nitrogen and the surface And that will Um, enable you to calculate what the surface area is based on the nitrogen um, molecules which is absorbed on the surface. Tapi kalau you dah pergi kepada stage 3, 4 semua ni dan multi layer, that will not give you a correct indication of your surface area. Sebab dia dah pergi ke multi layer. Bila surface area tu kita nak uh, uh, apa absorbed gas tu nitrogen ni, dia directly in contact with the surface. Uh, then from there kita tengok data dia. That is why and stage 2 ni berlaku sampai 0.3 p over p0 tau. Kalau you uh, 0.3, 0.35, sometimes 0.25. Kalau you lebih, pergi lebih daripada 0.35 ke 0.4, nanti you punya uh, correlation, uh, coefficient R squared tu akan teruk. You, you takkan dapat 0.99. Nanti line dia akan skewed sikit sebab dia dah outside the linear range. Uh, that is why um, uh, we do not use the BGH space area but we use this apa tu um, the best face area because dia untuk um, uh, the, the first apa uh, it covers the first monolayer and that is more more accurate hmm. okay is there any question from yeah, you? Yeah, yeah. buat RM1 apa ni outside ah ini buat buat harga ni <laughs> kena tanya lah you IRL saya buat buat bercakap teori dan uh, apa tu and analysis 
Buat harga ni kena bet only 300. Ini single point ke multi point single point kan? Bet space area. Uh, minta lah URL kurang kalau banyak-banyak sample kan. <laughs> okay. Okay, uh, doktor, if you have any question to okay. ask. Okay. Yeah, saya ada satu question. Sekejap uh, ya, Prof for micropore, I don't wish that they can use your micro. Okay, untuk micropore tu, um, Atiyah boleh guna um, alpha S ataupun T-plot. You ambil alpha, alpha, alpha S atau T-plot. Minta dia kalau you ada micropore, boleh tengok dia punya isotherm tu dia naik tinggi kan. Lepas tu you tengok proses distribution tu dia, uh, kalau you guna BGH dia dekat, dekat less than 2 nanometer tu dia naik ke atas ke arah kiri Y axis tu. You minta dia buat T-plot ataupun alpha S. Um, kita guna asap 2020. Okay. Saya ada satu lagi. Uh, saya ada soalan. Okay ke Atiyah? Alright. Okay. Saya ada soalan untuk uh, UIL. Dia ada hadiah kan? Okay. Um, okay. Uh, what's the difference between single point and multi point analysis? Okay. Single point ni uh, dia akan ambil um, at, um, biasanya kalau uh, kalau dulu-dulu sebelum kita ada this alat asap 2020 tu kita ada satu alat yang dia ambil dekat one pressure saja. Ya. Yeah? one pressure uh, for the bed space area. Tapi bila kita dah ada alat yang canggih ni, you can have different pressures uh, to apa tu, um, points in order to take it, um, apa tu, bed, uh, bed space area analysis. Uh, itu sahaja sebenarnya. Yeah? Right. Uh, Asalan proses cuma kurang pore volume tu, pore volume untuk satu pore. Okay, pore volume tu untuk the, the total pore. What is the pore volume of your sample? The total pore. Uh, dia bukan satu, untuk total pore je. How to differentiate whether the pore width is due to the pore in the sample, not the interparticle distance? Uh, it's not um, easy to... to dia, dia macam ni, dia akan masuk, uh, kalau katalah, okay, bila kita buat pause, eh, okay, uh, macam ni, macam mana cakap, example. Um, katalah kita ada sample, eh, kita ada sample, kita nak form porous sample ni, kita kena go through different process. Yeah? So, some of these pores can be interconnected, yeah? they can be connected. Tapi kalau interparticle distance, dia macam mana dia, dia nak isi benda tu. But dia, dia kena ada, dia kena isi pause tu. Yeah. If you have interparticle distance, that mean there is a gap, right? So kalau yang, um, yang apa tu, pause ini, dia kena masuk dalam pause tu. It has to fill the pause. Okay. Right, okay. Which to analysis can be that single multi point. Dua-dua pun okay, boleh. Uh. Kalau uh, you are buat single point kan? Ke pun multi point? <coughs> kalau kami ya, di, di, di Abatan Kimia Fakulti Sain, kalau under graduate kita buat single point saja sebab cepat. Uh, kalau yang uh, multi point tu dia lambat dan dia banyak lagi pakai gas. Kalau under graduate tu kita buat dia single point. Uh, Okey lah dapat. Tapi kalau multi point tu selain daripada fisik area, dia dapat macam-macam lagi data. Uh, jadi, um, tapi still fisik area tu is up to below 0.3 ke 0.35 kan? P over P0. Uh, tapi kalau katalah macam you nak banyak data tu you buat multi point. Tapi kalau you nak satu je buatlah single point. Itu dia. Untuk PSD, PSD dia apa? Puasa distribution, okay. Um, uh, okay, depending. Kalau kata puasa distribution ni, kalau katalah, of course dia, uh, dia macam-macam kan. Saya familiar dengan hanya BGH dengan DFT. Yang Howard, Scorwin, HK dengan Dubini ni saya uh, not very familiar. But you can still open up <coughs> some literature and and apa tu and tengok which one is more suitable for example. Kadang-kadang kan dia kita kena tengok uh, macam uh, ramai juga student-student uh, PhD ke dia memang kadang-kadang dia ambil semua tapi how do you analyze? So bila kita viva kita tanya dia kadang-kadang dia tak berapa nak sure. So if you are uh, if you are macam you are concerned certain area, you faham betul-betul benda tu apa dia boleh, what data you can get from there and then baru you you, you analyze benda tu. Ya. Yeah. Sebab dapat tak ada masalah. Okay uh, saya ada last question ya. Yeah. Okay. Um, nak tulis ke saya tulis ya. Yeah. Uh, nyatakan, nyatakan Okay, nyata, eh, nyata, nyata pula asal. Bila orang tu tak ni mana nampak sikit kan. Nyatakan pore size distribution untuk mesel pores dalam unit nanometer. Unit nanometer ya, eh, kena complete dengan unit. 
Uh, Aileen, Fatihah, pertama jawab 2 to 15 nanometer. Betul. Okay, uh, URL ada lagi hadiah nak bagi ke? Prizes for one question. For one question. HK dia punya question. Yes. sesuai tak? Atia, yang ni saya tak berapa sure Atia yang ni saya kena check lah sebab saya tak biasa dengan HK and Dubini ni saya tak tak biasa. I have to check. Maybe you can email me Atia and I'll give you a, a better a better answer Atia. Sorry. Okay. Okay uh, last one. Um, what what is the force operating in a physical absorption or OCESS. Okay. Okay, so and then yang terakhir, what is the force operating in a physical, bukan physical, physical, alamak. Physical absorption process. Physical, what is the force operating in a physical absorption process? Ini awal-awal tadi ada cakap. Ah, ya, yeah, physical absorption. Apa, apa, apa force dia? Ah, Fatihah, apa force dia yang um, force lah. Sebab dia kan antara absorbent, absorbent tu ada force kan. Kalau physical option ni, apa force? Ah, van der Waal. Thank you Hafiz. Van der Waal forces. So Hafiz, uh, Ain ya? Hafiz. Hafiz orang uh, student kimia ke Hafiz? Oh eh, sorry, Aileen tu jawab Aman, tak maaf. Ada dua tak? Uh, dua hadiah tak bagi Aileen dengan Hafiz? Ya? Yeah? Ada dua. Ah, bagi Aileen Hafiz, saya tetap siap. Ada dua, Aileen, Aileen dengan Hafiz. Uh, uh, both of you tu student kimia? Okay, Hafiz kata, oh SKT, Hafiz SKT, alright, okay. Uh, Hafiz kata, during sample submission, we need to provide specific range of the sample since it will be correlated with my sample. What if the sample is okay? Um, not necessarily, uh, you don't have to give your, because as for myself kan, I always work with waste sample and then uh, normally what I do, saya run the single point dulu. Uh, single point tu yang murah sikit lah kan, kalau dekat jawatan kimia, single point. Dan kalau saya tahu range dia, then saya run the multi point. So that apa tu, uh, I would know what data I, I want. Uh, so jadi kalau uh, kalau katalah macam, if you can a single point run, otherwise it's not necessarily to give the space area range, not necessarily. Sebab kalau, um, biasa sample kita guna sikit saja asap ni. Not much sample. Hmm. Hmm. Apa, it's, it's not necessary because I've, I've never uh, given uh, range of my sample space area bagi tapi I do sometimes run single point nak dapat roughly berapa lepas tu buat error multi point hmm. okay. Salam I asking I asking Is there any Apa dia Ain? Is there any question from the uh, audience? I'm just asking them Okay So, doctor, uh, any question can uh, ask uh, via email to email. Okay, uh, if you need to ask me for the question, okay. First and foremost, thank you very much for your attention. Uh, I do hope this sharing session has been beneficial, not only for me, but also for all of you and also for the staff of URL. Yeah? Uh, kita harap kita sama-sama lah ya, sharing. Then, mana yang soalan yang saya tak pun nak jawab tu, awak boleh email saya. Uh, this is my email. You can always email me. Um, cuma kadang-kadang memang saya lambat sikit jawab. Ya yeah, sebab kadang-kadang email saya penuh kan. Ataupun kalau nak nak telefon pun tak ada masalah. Whatsapp. Uh, Whatsapp beritahulah saya. Uh, ni Whatsapp 012. Uh, Whatsapp saya boleh Whatsapp tak ada masalah. Tanya. Cuma kalau lambat cepat tu awak kena bersabar lah. Uh, kalau saya tak jawab tu. Uh, Whatsapp Whatsapp doktor saya dia tanya soalan. Uh, tanya dia tu. Kadang-kadang tu ag agak lambat sikit kadang-kadang ya, sebab ada benda-benda yang saya uh, buat ya yang lambat sikit. Ya. Dan saya juga minta maaf ya segala-segala kekurangan masa lecture ni ya. Kadang-kadang uh, orang tua ni boleh bagi lecture dia uh, teknikal tu slow sikit. <laughs> slow sikit. Dan slide pun tak nak cantik sangat kan macam orang muda. Tapi saya harap uh, the, the messages, the, the knowledge gets through all of you insyaAllah. Okay, ya. Saya rasa dah sampai penghujung. Uh, so terima kasih saya ucapkan kepada Profesor Madia Kemis Dr. Zaitun atas perkongsian yang sangat bermanfaat sebentar tadi. 
Saya yakin ramai penonton kita telah memperoleh sedikit sebanyak tamad ilmu uh, terutamanya pada para pelajar yang sedang membuat kajian dalam bidang yang sama. Ingin saya ingatkan kepada para penonton untuk mengisi dan melengkapkan link kehadiran yang telah diberikan bagi melayakkan saudara mendapatkan mata CPD dan UTM Akad serta mendapatkan sijil program. Okey, sekarang Alhamdulillah kita sampai ke berhujung uh, sesi webinar bicara pakar slot kedua. Maka berakhirlah sudah sesi perkongsian bicara pakar kita pada pagi ini. Sekiranya tuan-tuan dan puan-puan memerlukan maklumat lanjut boleh mohon lebih terus kepada Profesor Madya Kepis Dr. Zaitun uh, seperti pada email dan nombor telefon tertera di um, okay, dan kepada tuan-tuan dan puan-puan yang sedang membuat pendidikan serta berhasrat untuk menghantar sampel berkaitan kimia analisis dan pendidikan uh, boleh layari ramai-ramai web kami uh, PPMU untuk maklumat lanjut. Bagi semua pihak bagi pihak URL, um, Jabatan TSCPI dan Jawatan Kuasa Webinar Bicara Pakar URL, kami mengucapkan jutaan terima kasih kepada Profesor Madya, uh, Kemis Dr. Zaitun Abdul Majid kerana sudi meluangkan masa untuk berkongsi ilmu yang sangat bermanfaat untuk para pelajar dan para penyelidik pada hari ini. Terima kasih juga saya ucapkan uh, kepada Jawatan Kuasa Webinar dan semua penonton yang terus setia menyokong dan menonton bersama-sama. Uh, kami sepanjang webinar ini berlangsung sehingga akhir sesi. Kami juga ingin memohon maaf uh, ke ma jika terdapat sebarang kekurangan dan kelemahan pada sesi ini berlangsung. Semoga kita berjumpa lagi di webinar akan datang uh, pada 29 Ogos 2021 yang bertajuk NMA Spectroscopy Liquid What, When and How yang akan disampaikan oleh penceramah hebat iaitu Dr. Siti Eryanti binti Hashim dari Jabatan Kimia Fakulti Sains uh, UTM Johor Bahru.